Okay, so let's get into some of the other areas that I found really interesting in the way that this new Metro interface works with the traditional Windows desktop. One of the first things I did when I installed this was I went to the control panel because I was so thrown off by this screen resolution uh, which is 1220 by 768 I believe. So I wanted to go change it and uh, I didn't actually find that option in here. They had very very basic um, uh, controls in here, the types that you would find on a mobile phone for instance. But this was really interesting. Uh, they have a uh, they have something in here that um, I'm having trouble finding it right now. But more settings down at the bottom for the things that um, apparently they couldn't put in here and are a little more complicated. Now watch what happens. I'm actually not going to hit that right now because what happens is it's going to take me into the traditional desktop environment. You can probably hear the fans going right now. Uh, this is a terrible, terrible machine. This is just a bad Dell um, Core 2 Duo processor running at 2 gigahertz with uh, 4 gigabytes of memory. But it always tends to run with the fan on a normal basis. Now I'm curious if it's going to kick into overdrive now as I click the desktop and go into the traditional Windows desktop. Um, no, that was pretty good. Um, and it started out pretty quickly there. It really didn't have an issue. Um, again, uh, you can sort of switch between this environment and think of the desktop as more of an app. So I can do all this and uh, just move back to the desktop. Um, Ribbon UI is present in the uh, Windows Explorer, um, which you can either like or, or dislike. Um, it's here to stay, uh, especially since it's such a staple in Office. Um, but here's the thing that I found really bizarre. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Internet Explorer tab. And uh, this looks pretty much like IE9 on the desktop today. If you go over to Settings, to About Internet Explorer, we see, okay, this is, in fact, uh, IE10, which they've been touting all this time. And it's a pretty fast browser, actually. It hung up for a second there, but um, once it got going, I mean, it, it rendered pretty quickly. This looks kind of ridiculous on this screen. Again, it's a relatively low resolution for a screen this size. Considering that this is a 17-inch screen and the same resolution is going to be available on tablets of 10 inches, um, I think that um, you can say that that'll definitely look better. Of course, they don't intend you to be in this environment. Now, I'm going to open up one other tab here. Let's say CNN. Okay, great. So we've got our traditional tabs. Now, if I want to get out of this, I can either hit the start button on the keyboard like I've been doing, or I can hit it down in the corner. And it's going to take us back out into uh, the start menu. But here's the interesting thing. If you click Internet Explorer here, it actually takes you in... Oh, this is from earlier when I accidentally uh, uh, touched the link to Twitter for uh, John Gruber. Uh, this is the touch-based IE10. It looks completely different. Um, let's say we, ent we enter in uh, the addresses down at the bottom. So let's say... Very fast. Gets there, gets there super quick. Um, and... Uh, all you have to do is right click and you can see your tabs at the top. So let's go someplace else. Say this is my next as a suggestion since I've gone there once before. Again, now, now right click, here are my tabs at the top. We've got the, the Twitter page for John Gruber, we've got Clarinet Remaking, and this is my next. But hit the start menu and come out to the front, and then go back into the desktop, and you've got IE open here as well, but different tabs. So 
you know, it's not exactly the the worst thing in the world, but really bizarre that you've got the same application running with different tabs open because it's it's just a completely different instance of that application.